Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I thought we would take a look at a cute piece of test equipment. This is the NLS model MS215 miniscope. Nonlinear Systems made these, oh, around circa mid-1980s. This is a two-channel, dual-trace, battery-operated CRT oscilloscope. Uh, it will also run on AC power. Uh, it uses a 12-volt AC power adapter and that charges the internal batteries and will power the scope. Um, it will run for about three hours on the batteries and the batteries it uses are these big sealed lead acid D-size batteries. This is, this is a dead one. Um, I have two of these scopes. I just recently upgraded them. I put new, um, put new batteries in both of them. Uh, check the calibration against my Tektronix scope. This one was was right in spec. It was it was good. Didn't have to do anything with it. Um, the other one I have needed a little bit of tweaking, which I did, and it's uh, it's performing admirably. Uh, the two scopes I have are about 4,700 serial numbers apart. Uh, this one we're looking here is I think it's 7703, and the older scope I have is serial number 28 something. Um, they made a few improvements in between the two of them. Uh, most notably, they, you know, they upgraded some of the diodes that were in there. Uh, schematics show that they removed a fuse, tweaked a couple capacitors, <coughs> nothing of any, any real significant note. Just to have a look, I have the second one open. We can, t we'll take a quick look inside here for, you can see it's, uh, it's quite a compact little unit. Um, this is the CRT here. These are these tubes were made in Germany, I believe, by Telefunken. But it's an all analog scope. This is the this is the batteries in here. If you look, this big thing under the metal shield are the, th the three D cell batteries. Uh, the board back here does uh, battery charging, power supply regulation. <coughs> um, it's, it's the high voltage transformer for the CRT. Um, down below underneath here, you've got the front end, vertical amplifiers, horizontal time base, all that good stuff. Um, it's all this, you know, all discrete stuff. There's a handful of ICs, uh, mostly for doing the timing for the horizontal trace. But otherwise, it's, um, it's a pretty compact unit. Yes, this is unit 2827, and is there a date in here? I do not see a date. <laughs> um, so yes, this is what it looks like inside. Um, not much, well, I shouldn't say not much. Um, you know, nothing like, you know, the big boy Tektronix scopes with everything, um, but really it's, it's 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 well made. Um, I mean, testament to that is how old they are, considering it was a portable scope, and they're still working, um, and quite useful. So, like I said, this is a 15 megahertz scope. Um, you know, by no means, you know, you, you're not gonna you're not gonna check out any any super modern high speed stuff with it. But for hobbyist stuff audio stuff it's actually um it's actually good so <clears throat> let's come back here and let's take a look um, if we if we look at the scope it's got um what you would expect to find in the scope we've got a right and left channel uh ac it's uh, got ac and dc coupling um we've got four eight so we've got 12 ranges for the 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 vertical end uh we can show just channel one channel two it'll do alt and chop um so you know pretty standard fare um just the traces up and down it has you know calibrated and then non-calibrated for your volts per division uh horizontal time base section uh, we've we can do uh, for 12, so 24 ranges. Um, we could adjust the trace horizontally, and you, we also have uncalibrated, so we can 
you know, just dial in um, around the time base. It will also do XY mode, which is actually pretty cool given it's a, such a tiny little scope. And then the triggering section, um, you know, scope and level, and um, it will do, it will, it will line trigger off of the AC power adapter. So you can do line triggering. Um, auto mode, which, you know, just shows the trace all the time. Internal, where it will, it will trigger off of channel, off of channel one. And you can feed it an external trigger. And looking under there, there's the external trigger input. There's a ground input over here underneath the um, channel selector switch. And there's a one volt peak to peak square wave for probe calibration. <clears throat> Around back, uh, we've got the input for the charger. Um, Adjustments for intensity, focus, astig astigmatic, um, and you can get it to channel one and two balance. Um, so you you can um, that's just to, to tweak the front ends a little bit, um, and you can do that without having to open it up. Uh, all the other adjustments you have to you have to slide it out of the case and um, play with it that way, which of course makes sense. So. Let's uh, let's see what this can, let's see what this can do. <clears throat> I'm going to bring my my Unity UTG932 function generator over. Ah. This is what you get for buying cheap BNC cables, but. All right, there we go. Let's bring this over here. Get those wires out of the way. All right. Go to channel one. Channel one on. Channel one is on. Ah, you're going to blow my whole video now, aren't you? Ah, there we go. Let's put this on internal. And let's move this up here a little bit. In fact, just because we're in video, I'm going to turn up the intensity a little. And there we go. We got a nice little one kilohertz sine wave there. Drop it down a bit. Looks pretty good. Put it in dual channel mode. Let's see if we can get this so that we can see both traces at once. And let's turn on channel two. go. Let's actually turn it on. And let's set this thing for 2 volts peak to peak. Same thing here. Amplitude 2 peak to peak. There we go. You know, problem with the small screen is, um, well, it's a small screen. But, let's come back here. Oh. There we go. 
Now let's get that back down into something that makes sense. There we go. All right, so both channels are 2 volt, or 1 volt per division. We're sending it a 2 volt peak to peak wave. And um, I mean, there you go. Let's uh, let's just put this off a little bit. We can go in different waveform. Not a lot to, I mean, not a lot to describe on it. Like I said, it's a really, it's a really basic scope. I mean, you know, literally anything else that you're going to buy today is going to do more than this. But um, you can come across these on eBay every now and then, and for not a lot of money. The uh, this one I picked up for forty bucks, I think. Um, which really, given what it does, uh, is is really. I mean, really impressive. You're not you're not going to find, um, you know, a a portable battery powered scope for that. I mean, yeah, they've got the the little Chinese digital DSO scopes, but those are like like they only have a bandwidth of maybe you know a couple hundred megahertz. Um, I mean, couple hundred kilohertz. They're really, I mean. They're really toys. You're not going to do anything serious with this. This you can this you can actually do, you know, good measurement with. Uh, the graticule on it is accurate, you know. So, you know, that's a that's a big that's a big deal. So, you know, standard analog scope measurements you can do with this. And this is this is running off the battery right now. Um, you know, and like I said, this will this will run for about for about. Nah, three hours, I think they said. And just to show here, if we take this and put this in, um, there we go. If we put this in XY mode, and you can do the ever popular Lisa Shoe figures, um, which again, uh, something you're not going to do with one of those those cheap little Chinese digital scopes. Most of those are only one channel um, at best, and uh, yeah, so. A lot of whole not else to not a whole lot else to say about it. Um, you know, if you can find one, and you know, if you don't have an analog scope and you want something small and something portable, um, you know, check one of these out. Um, they are old, so it is possible. You know, so if you're going to get one, you know, try to make sure that it works. Um, on the plus side, is you you can you can repair them. Um, you know, there's no, no unobtainium in them. Uh, all the parts are real, like bog standard parts. Um, I even went through, I looked, <clears throat> I thought for the older scope at one point that one of the transistors might have been, power transistors might have been bad. And, um, you know, you can find them on DigiKey and Mouser. You can, you can still buy, you can still buy them. Um, there's a couple, couple of, um, Voltage um, current references in here. Uh, those parts are still available. Uh, you know, it's all through hole construction. So, you know, if you need to, if you need to repair, replace something, uh, you can. There's no, you know, unlike the older tech scopes that have their their custom ICs that you basically can't find anywhere, um, unless someone has gone in and and taken apart an old scope and yanked them out of there. Um, you know, it's all st it's all all standard off the shelf stuff that you can that you can still source. So, um, you know, that's that's kind of a kind of a big deal. Uh, 
All right, that's it. Short video. I just thought we would take a look at it. Uh, if anyone has any questions about it or about the scope or anything you think I can answer, let me know. Um, other than that, thanks for watching. Take it easy.